I just started the, uh, uh, so on Monday, uh, we're talking about uh, how to do the uh, estimation uh, on the basic coefficients, right? We also learned uh, uh, how to choose the basic functions. Uh, so the basic functions can be Fourier basic functions or B spline basic functions. And we learned uh, uh, to estimate the basic coefficients by uh, least squares. So if we can represent a function as a linear combination of basic function, then the model will become a multiple linear regression model. Uh, the one problem uh, when we uh, do the basis expansion is that we have to choose the number of basic function uh, carefully. Uh, I have to show you uh, one examples. Like if we uh, choose uh, too many basic functions, we will have the overfitting problems. And if we have uh, too few basic functions, then the basic function will be not flexible enough. So uh, it is very important to choose the right um, number of basic functions. And we have talked about uh, the uh, cross validation criterion to choose the uh, optimal number of basic functions. OK, so uh, today uh, we will talk about uh, uh, another method uh, we call the uh, uh, smoothing splines. Uh, so basically, uh, we will add a, a roughness penalty um, on the estimation to control the, the, the to prevent the overfitting problems. Um, so uh, when we when we talk about uh, the smoothness of the function, and uh, so in our mind, the most smooth um, curve we can imagine is either a straight line, a constant line, or a straight lines. Um, so, um, for example, if I show you um, this uh, uh, blue uh, fitted curve, you will uh, realize, you will tell yourself, you may tell yourself, this is not a smooth curve, right? Um, the reason is because you see too many local vehicles um, along the time. So um, how can we uh, characterize this kind of uh, vagueness in the, in the curves? Um, so in mathematics, we have learned that uh, uh, we can describe the uh, roughness uh, by, the, uh, by the derivative. So, um, so here, uh, if a curve is, uh, is, is smooth, we typically means the second derivative of the function is small. Okay, so here um, we have uh, notation D here means the differential operator. Okay, so we can have uh, um, first derivative and second derivative here. So, um, so we will define the, uh, the roughness of the curve by uh, defining the integrate, integrated uh, square of the second derivative of the curve. So uh, you can imagine <coughs> like uh, here, when this uh, uh, penalty is equal to zero, it will be corresponding to x of t either equal to a constant or x of t is a linear function of t, <coughs> right? In that case, the second derivative of the function will be equal to zero. Okay. So this is the this is the uh, definition for the um, penalty term. Um, so if we define the penalty term in this way, um, so here um, this is show the uh, second derivative of the fitted curve. So uh, this is again the uh, uh, estimation uh, for the Vancouver. Um, delay precipitations. And uh, so here, this is using three Fourier basic functions. So this blue one is the uh, estimated function. And uh, on the right panel is to show the uh, second derivative of the functions. And uh, so, uh, so you can see uh, both the estimated curve and the second derivative are smooth. If we 
um, adding the number of uh, basic functions. So now if we will then searching for your basic functions. We can now see that uh, uh, in this uh, um, blue curve, fitted curves, it now have some uh, local wiggling points, right? And if we look at the second derivative, the second derivative will actually will have uh, many uh, oscillations around zero, right? Compared to the first one, if you look at the magnitude of the second derivatives, so this will be, be between um, minus um, 0.004 to plus 0.004. And if you look at the, uh, the, the value in the three uh, free basic functions, you can see the magnitude of the second derivative is only to uh, 6 to 10 to minus 4 to 6 to 10 minus 4. So it's, it's, it's much smaller when using the three free basic functions. And if we increase the number of basic functions, we can see this uh, uh, more obviously. Now the second derivative is in the range between minus 0 0.01 and uh, 0 0.01. So the magnitude of the second derivative will become even larger. And you can imagine the, um, the value of the penalty term will become um, bigger because the penalty is equal to the integral of the second square of the second derivative of the curve. So um, we can try the even more. Okay, um, so um, generally, uh, if we want to estimate uh, a curve x of t, we will define the uh, define the roughness penalty uh, equal to the uh, using the second derivative of the curve. Uh, suppose um, if you are interested to estimate the second derivative of the curve, um, then generally we will add uh, um, a plus two to when we define the roughness penalty. For example, if we um, want to estimate the uh, m derivative, we will use the m plus two derivative to define the roughness penalty. So now we uh, have this uh, roughness penalty. So then we were adding this roughness penalty uh, J2 uh, to the fitting criterion. So you can see here, now we have uh, um, uh, penalized the sum square error. And uh, so in this uh, um, criterion, uh, we have the, the first term is about the sum square error of the fitting, right? And then the second term will be the um, penalty term. J2. And uh, so we have a parameter lambda to control the trade off between fitting to the data and, uh, uh, and the roughness of the uh, curve x of t. So lambda here we call the smoothing parameters. So when lambda increase, um, the roughness, uh, so it will put a more weight on the J2, right? And then the roughness will get a more um, penalty. Therefore, the fitted curve x of t will become more smooth. Um, for example, if we put a lambda going to infinity, you can imagine then the x of t will become a, a straight line. OK, so this is uh, the uh, penalized sum square error. So now we can estimate the uh, basis coefficients um, by uh, fit by minimize this uh, penalize the sum square error. So here is to show you um, uh, some results when we adding the uh, adding the uh, roughly the penalty term. I think up here uh, we using uh, seventy three basic functions. Um, so and now um, we change the value of the smoothing parameter lambda and then we look at how the fitted curve will be will be looks like when we try to minimize the penalize the sum square error. So here uh, this result is to show you um, the when lambda uh, equal to 10 minus 1. So um, so uh, here log means the um, log 10 algorithm. Okay um, so if when lambda equal to 10 to minus 1, 
and so this is the physical looks like. So apparently it's overfitting. And we can increase the value of lambda. We can increase the value of lambda to be 10 to 3. And so the curve become uh, more smoother, become smoother. If we change the lambda to be 10 to 7, it will become um, much smoother. And if you can change lambda to 10 to 11, um, uh, it will become uh, smooth enough. And we can even increase the lambda. You can see here, uh, when lambda equal to 10 to uh, 15, uh, the, uh, the fitted curve will become too smooth, right? So, um, uh, so you see here, uh, this curve is uh, didn't uh, uh, going down as we like for the as shown in the data, right? Um, so when lambda equal to ten to minus to nineteen, it become a, a almost a straight line. Okay. Um, so this kind of just to show you um, uh, the effect of the value of the smoothing parameter lambda. Uh, so um, it can show that uh, um, the function x of t that minimizes this uh, uh, penalized sum square error will be just a uh, 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 cubic spline function with a knot at each sample point tj. And this is often uh, called a, a cubic spline smoothing or cubic smoothing splines. Uh, so basically, um, we can uh, express x of t as a linear combination of the b-spline basic function. And uh, so we can put uh, one node at each data point, and then um, the number of basic function will be um, order plus the number of interval nodes. So the number of interval nodes will be n minus 2 plus order of the splines will be plus 4. So we will have n plus 2 um, basic functions. So we will using this n plus 2 basic functions to fit n points. So, um, so here, um, we can um, express uh, the uh, roughness penalty term, uh, the integral of the square of the mth derivative of x of t. Um, because x of t is a linear um, combination of the basic function, therefore, the uh, mth derivative of x t will become the um, uh, linear combination of the mth derivative of the basic functions. So therefore, we are able to write down this penalty term as a quadratic, uh, um, quadratic uh, uh, form, um, c transpose times r times c. So here, uh, r uh, will be um, just the uh, derivative of the um, mth derivative of the basic functions um, times uh, uh, the transpose of the uh, vector of the mth derivative of the basic functions. So R here will be a um, j by j uh, matrix. And uh, so because of, uh, if we decided the basic functions, we are able to calculate the derivative right away. Therefore, uh, this R can be calculated uh, numerically uh, when we decide the basic functions. So basically, you can treat R here as known. So then um, we can estimate the, uh, the, the coefficients uh, to the basic function c by minimizing uh, the uh, penalized sum squares. And you can show that uh, uh, the estimated uh, um, basis, function, basis coefficients will be, uh, will be looks like uh, uh, in this form. OK? And uh, so here, um, this uh, uh, w uh, basically is the uh, weight we put on the observations. So uh, in general, uh, we can treat this W as a, a identity matrix. And uh, so in this case, we treat each observations um, the same. So uh, then this W will disappear. 
Um, okay, so then after we get this C hat, the estimation for the basic coefficients, then uh, we can um, find the fitted, fitted uh, value at each um, uh, time point. So the fitted value on uh, y hat will be just equal to the basis matrix of phi times uh, uh, the the basis coefficient c hat. Okay, so this is uh, um, we have this form. So as mentioned before, um, this uh, we can treat this uh, um, product of this complex matrix multiplication as one matrix called S. So basically, y hat equal to s times y. So this is the form of the s. Okay, and then um, uh, we can um, we can use this s to estimate the number of effective uh, parameters in the model. So then the uh, fitted curve s hat of t will be equal to uh, phi t. This is a uh, phi t is a vector of the basic functions times uh, um, c hat the basis uh, um, the basic coefficients. So I think here this phi t should be a uh, transpose here. So um, so you can see here uh, after we get uh, this. Uh, um, Basis the coefficients, we are able to evaluate uh, this fitted curve at height of t at any time point. The reason is because uh, we can we know we can evaluate the value of the basic function phi t at any time point. So this is uh, a nice thing when we using the uh, smoothing splines. Um, and you also can see here the s height of t kind of is a, a linear. Uh, operator uh, with on the on the y right. So if you look at the, on the the whole um, left part as one uh, vector of uh, uh, functions, and then this y will be some kind of weight on these uh, uh, functions. So then we can evaluate uh, the influence of each y on the curve. Uh, so uh, here it will show you um, the left side is again the fitted uh, um, precipitation curve and uh, then uh, we can calculate uh, um, this uh, the value uh, of this vector of these uh, functions and uh, so we can look at uh, how the weight of each yi on the fitted curve. So this is uh, this uh, kind of here, the three colored uh, um, uh, curves represent the uh, influence of each uh, um, observations, observations at the 20th day, 180 days, and 300 days, the influence of these three uh, data points on the fitted curve. And you can see here, basically, uh, the influence of this point is, uh, has the most influence in its uh, local neighbors, right? So you can see the influence, for example, just look at the, the influence of uh, the observation in 180. You can see the influence uh, is, is, is the max, is, uh, has a large influence when around 180. And after certain um, distance, the influence becomes zero. Okay, so mm -hmm. therefore uh, you can uh, treat it this uh, um, uh, smoothing splines method also as uh, some locally method. So basically, you um, for each fitted curve, they only using these uh, local informations uh, to to estimate the curves. Okay. Um, so when we um, before we using the roughly the penalty, 
we have we know that the number of parameters is equal to the number of basic functions on um, k here, right? Um, but uh, when we using the add the penalty on the in our criterion, actually the base basis although we have uh, um, n plus two uh, number of coefficients, but uh, the all these coefficients has some constraints because these coefficients have to be together minimize this uh, uh, roughness penalty. Therefore, these coefficients are not completely free, right? Therefore, um, the uh, effective number of uh, coefficients actually is much smaller than n plus 2. So, um, so we have learned that uh, before, uh, without the roughness penalty, the degree freedom or the number of parameters is equal to the trees of S, right? The smooth matrix. So, um, so for our when we have this rough in the penalty term, we still have this uh, uh, smooth matrix, right? And so therefore, we again we will take the trees of the smooth matrix S as, as the uh, degree freedom of the model or the effective number of parameters. So, for example, um, for this uh, um, Vancouver precipitation data, when we fit this data with the 365 basic functions, lambda equal to 10 to 4, um, we can calculate uh, um, the uh, degree freedom actually only 12.9. Uh, so, in other words, uh, although we have 365 basic coefficients, so effectively, there's only 13 um, um, parameters because we added this roughing penalty in the model, okay? So this is uh, another um, uh, very powerful thing about uh, this uh, uh, smoothing splines. So we are able to use the smoothing prim uh, penalty term to control the effective, uh, effective uh, uh, number of parameters. So, um, so before, uh, we have learned that uh, uh, we defined the uh, roughness penalty uh, as a second derivative because we want to um, get a smooth curve. And we know that uh, um, uh, we should not penalize uh, uh, the constant lines or the straight lines. Therefore, we using the second derivative to define the uh, roughness penalty. So, um, So, uh, so you can see uh, when we define this uh, roughly the penalty term, actually it really depends on how you view the uh, the, the the most smooth uh, function you can imagine um, in when you fit the curve. Um, for example, here. Uh, when we uh, when we estimate the uh, weather data, we know this uh, um, weather data is periodic over the year. So, um, therefore, for this periodic data, we may think um, the uh, sinusoidal curves should not get the penalty um, because we know um, for the sine cosine functions, they are pretty smooth, right? They should not get the uh, any penalty. Um, uh, there, but for the same function, we know that the second duty of same function actually is not equal to zero, right? So what can we do? So therefore, um, for the periodic curves, uh, we define the, a new um, penalty um, by uh, define this uh, a special operator called a harmonic acceleration operator. So uh, this is the definition of the harmonic acceleration operator. So Lx of t equal to uh, omega squared times the derivative of x of t plus the third derivative of x of t. So if we define the operator in this way, we can plug in uh, sin omega t and cosine omega t into this operator. And you can verify that uh, if we define the operator in this way, then this operator will equal to zero uh, when 
x is equal to sin omega t or cosine omega t. Okay, so this is uh, um, kind of give you um, like another uh, alternative uh, if your x t is a periodic and you want, don't want to penalize sin omega t or cosine omega t. Okay. So here, this is kind of show you uh, the value of the uh, harmonic acceleration function looks like um, uh, when we fit the uh, precipitations uh, with different number of uh, uh, different values of the uh, smoothing parameters. And so you see here, uh, for this uh, on the left side uh, is a fitted curve, and uh, so we can find the um, the value of the harmonic uh, acceleration operator on this curve, and you can see here it's it's uh, this uh, um, this uh, harmonic acceleration is uh, pretty small um, when if we have uh, smooth curves. So um, so generally, uh, we can also define the, um, a linear differential operator. Um, for the roughness penalty. So here, uh, this is uh, uh, one um, general uh, linear differential operator. Um, so uh, this uh, AM of T is a uh, uh, time varying coefficient uh, to the M derivative of X of T. And uh, so we can define X T to be smooth if L X T to be equal to zero. Okay, um, so here, um, uh, let's talk about, uh, um, so we have learned that uh, um, when we um, estimated the coefficients, we added the roughness penalty on the uh, fitting criterion, uh, we can write down uh, the fitting criterion as a, a quadratic form of the basic coefficients. Um, and then we can minimize uh, the penalized sum square errors. Um, uh, we can get some uh, close formula uh, when we minimize these uh, penalized sum square errors. Um, and the lambda, the smoothing parameter, um, play an important role uh, when we uh, fitted the curves. So how can we choose the smoothing parameters? So there are um, uh, uh, several methods available to choose the optimal value for the smoothing parameters. Uh, so, uh, uh, so the first method we use is the, again, the ordinary cross validation. So basically, uh, we have learned that the formula for the uh, ordinary cross validation is is is, uh, is like this, right? So basically, we have uh, defined uh, this uh, S is the smooth matrix. So S sub I, I will be just uh, um, the uh, I uh, element in the diagonal um, of the matrix smooth matrix S. Okay. Um, so this is uh, ordinary cross validation, and uh, there's also another criterion called the generalized cross validation. Uh, so, uh, so here, show you the, uh, the formula for the generalized cross validation. Um, so, um, basically, um, you can write down this uh, uh, GCV um, as equal to um, N over N minus degree freedom times SSE over N minus degree freedom. Um, so you can show that uh, uh, the, the GCV actually uh, smooths more than the ordinary cross validations. So here, uh, kind of show you uh, the result uh, when we are uh, working on the uh, S Vancouver precipitations. So here, um, 
I think uh, here we choose uh, um, 73 um, basic functions and uh, and we, 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 we change the value of the lambda. So you can see here when the value of lambda change, um, the degree of freedom or the effective number of parameters, uh, if we lambda is increasing, the degree of freedom will be effective degree of freedom will be decreasing. Um, and, uh, and the sum square error will be increasing. And uh, so um, then the ordinary, ordinary cross addition will have this nice uh, uh, U-shape uh, here. So you can see here, basically, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the value of the ordinary curve addition and generalized curve addition is minimized uh, when lam log lambda equal to, uh, to, to 6 or 7 here, right? Okay. Yes, I guess here this uh, this log uh, maybe is uh, is is a natural logarithm. Um, yeah, I didn't remember exactly what's what's the base of this logarithm. Okay, so now um, let's look at the confidence interval uh, for the fitted curve. So uh, on, so as we um, learned uh, previously, um, when we added this roughly the penalty, the fitted uh, value y hat is still a linear function of this y. So y hat equal to s times y. So this s is a smooth matrix. It's just uh, when we write down the smooth matrix s, there will be a lambda r uh, in the, in the, in the uh, bracket, right? So when uh, if uh, there's no penalty, there will be this term will be disappear. Okay, so if we know y hat equal to s y, then uh, uh, using the uh, multivariate uh, statistics, we know that the variance of y hat will be just equal to the s times the variance of y times s transpose, right? Because here we assume that this y is the rid um, random variable with the mean sigma square, uh, therefore uh, the variance of y will be equal to sigma square times identity matrix, therefore the variance of y hat will be equal to uh, sigma square times s times s transpose. So after we get this, uh, uh, this variance, uh, we can do the similar things and we can also find the, the variance uh, for the derivative of the fitted curve. So here, um, this right panel here is to show you uh, the confidence interval for the derivative of the fitted curve. Um, so here is the summary of what we learned. So basically, now um, we learned a, a new technique to control the smoothness of the fitted curve. So we add we add a roughly the penalty uh, on the on, on the fitting correct sum square errors, and uh, so we use the lambda to control the trade off between smoothness of the curve and the fit, um, and we have learned that uh, uh, GCV uh, can be used to choosing lambda, um, and also we can um, because uh, this uh, operator is linear, uh, we can find the a uh, common interval uh, for the fitted curves. Okay. So, any questions?